We welcome our brethren on live stream also. Trust us well with you. Tonight we're continuing in the Gospel of John. This will be our ninth exposition. We're going to be in verses 19 to 21. We're going to deal with something tonight that is uh, relatively fresh to me. I'm going to try and make express myself as clearly as possible. In the divine economy, or the environment in which God works, it's important that men know whom, who God has sent. That's a very important factor. So far as the record is concerned, scriptural record, the first person that God sent on a mission with a specific word is Moses, which is a long time after the first of the world world created. Noah was chosen by God, but he wasn't sent out with a, mm -hmm. with a message. Abraham, he, he chosen by God too, but he wasn't, he wasn't sent out with a mm -hmm. message. We assume that Enoch preached a message that Jude said, but you would not, not a lot of said about it. But the first, Moses is the first person of record. So now this is remarkable. We're talking uh, a couple of thousand years, 20, tw almost 2,500 years from the beginning of the world. This, <laughs> this is staggering to consider. Moses is the first person of record that God said, Say unto them, Exodus 3.16, or speak unto them, Exodus 6.11, or speak thou, Exodus 6.29, or thou shalt speak, Exodus 7.2. Or speak now in the ears of the people, Exodus 11, 2. Or speak unto the congregation, Exodus 12, 3. Or speak unto the children of Israel, Exodus 14, 2. See, this, he's the first person of record that we have God saying that to. That's most remarkable. All of the prophets, of course, were also sent to say something. There were no silent prophets. Prophets didn't draw pictures, you know. Yeah, <laughs> they said something. In every case, it was essential for the people to know who these, who these spokesmen were. Mm -hmm. Because there were other people who said oh, yeah. God sent them, mm -hmm. yeah. but they didn't. So God told his people about that, and they were admonished to check it out and see which one God had actually sent. Now we come to the first man sent from God to a people with a special word for near, nearly a half a millennium. I, it says half a century there in the lesson. It's a half a millennium. For nearly 500 years, this is the first man that's been sent, that, as far as the records are concerned, was sent from God to people. A period of nearly 500 years. Oh, it's something to think about. He was not an anonymous man. <clears throat> and he wasn't intended to be anonymous. People knew about him. They knew his name. They knew where he was preaching. And they knew what he was saying. They knew who he represented. Now our text reports the response of some religious officials to these various reports. John's going to answer them with candor. Later, John, the Apostle John, reports in a Luke 3, 2, the word of God came unto John, the son of Zacharias, in the wilderness. Yeah. See, so what? Yeah. <laughs> the only way you knew what was given to John, you had to hear him talk. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You had no other way you'd know. Mm -hmm. No other way. God sent a, a preacher 
So our text takes up after he's been he's been preaching. This now this is the introduction. We're not actually in as far as the Gospel of John's concerned. We're not actually into the ministry of John yet. But this is his introduction mm -hmm. to it. And this is the record of John. That is, this is the Apostle John telling you about John the Baptist's mm -hmm. record. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who art thou? Mm -hmm. So, see, he's commenting on something. That it's, yeah. it's not chronological. It's, uh -huh. Sometimes to make a point, you got to bring up a conclusion way on down the line there someplace. See, yeah. you have to do this when you teach. You can't always teach chronologically. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to buttress what you're saying by something that happened way, af way after the time you're talking about. Now, John, uh, John is going to answer them, the testimony of John. Some of the record, this is the record of John, the record of John. Some versions say this is the testimony of John. This is what he said, the witness of John. This is John's answer. This is the proof John gave. And he's completely honest, just straightforward. He just answered their questions. Now, John, uh, he'd been living in a wilderness, uh, outside of the normal circumference of social life. <laughs> His entire ministry is a gigantic contradiction yes. Yes. of the postulate that to be effective, you've got to identify with the people you're talking to. See, right. this is a, <laughs> it's a creep. If anyone didn't identify, it'd be John. He'd yeah. been in the wilderness. He had been living with the people. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't know the people. People didn't know him, but oh, look how effective he was. See, that puts the lie to this. Yeah, amen. This is taught now. This is taught. Uh -huh. right. Kind of get close to the people, make friends with the people, then listen to what you say. Yes, brother. Yes. It's just my opinion, but I, I think that one of the reasons that John was, he was mostly recognized by the, the regular people as a prophet. Remember, the it was the religious leaders that had a problem with John. <laughs> Remember, they remember the people thought John was a prophet. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And this is just my opinion, but I think that is that is evidence of the fact that that God had previously done work with the Jewish people to culture them in such a way yeah, yeah. that when when typically when prophets did arise, there were numbers of them that yeah, recognized right. that something was going on. I don't know that John would have been John would be effective in America. Mm. People yeah. wouldn't know what's going on. That's right. That, that, yeah. There's not been that kind of culture. Yeah, just so, like John prepared the way, he God prepared the people's way. Amen. He did it largely through the scriptures, but there were there were people who were ready. Yes. Yeah. For this, that it was they were prepared. How else could you account for him going out there? Asked that question, they were trying to trap Jesus. So he <laughs> asked him a question. He said, "Is the baptism of John was it from God or from men?" They said. If we say it was from men, the people will stone us because right. they all believed he was a prophet. Yeah, that's right. That was two years after John had been gone. Yes, He'd right. been gone for two years, and, and the leaders, the enemies of John and Jesus, were still thinking that way about them. They knew the power of his ministry. That's right. Mm -hmm. mm. Amen. Yeah, God drew them out there. No, no question. There were people whose heart, well, it says later, we'll deal with it some later, but later it says there was great expectation. Among the people, when John the Baptist started, there was a, the expectation was already there. Yeah. So that that was where God uh, come in. Now, by saying this was the uh, record of John himself, I don't doubt that the Apostle John may have himself heard him say this, yeah. because uh, when he was preaching, what John was uh, preaching, and he pointed out the Lamb of God that take away the sin of the world. The scripture says that there were two, that John was standing there when he said that, behold, the Lamb of God. He was standing there with two of his disciples. And upon hearing that word, the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. And in John 1, 35 through 40, says they spent the entire day with him. Now, one of the disciples was Andrew, Peter's brother, the other one isn't mentioned, but it's uh, assumed by people that it was John, and that's kind of John's manner all through his letter. He'd refer to a certain a disciple, and it'd be himself he's, yeah, he's, yeah, he he's talking about. So this was no doubt John, no doubt, mm -hmm. 
heard this exchange that we're yeah. we're talking about. Yeah, well, he never mentions himself personally. That's right. Yeah, he'll say a young man or somebody. He'll three. That's right. Twice. The disciple whom Jesus loved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the scriptures say the Jews, the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem. Now, some of the versions say Jewish leaders in Jerusalem, and I, I, technically the language doesn't say that, but I think I think that's that's a proper assessment. Several versions read the Jewish leaders and Jewish authorities. I can't see the populace sending uh, pre, uh, Levites and priests. I can't. So this had to be like the leader leading people who were threatened by <laughs> threatened by John's ministry. It's interesting just to note that John uses the expression Jews more than any other writer of Scripture. He uses the term 67 times. Matthew uses it five. Mark uses it six. And Luke uses it five times. <laughs> and most of the time that John uses it, Jews, he's speaking about the opponents. Yes, yeah. He's not, it's not necessarily like a blanket uh -huh. statement. This is the only verse from Matthew through Revelation where that mentions the word Levites. That word is not mentioned any place else. And that includes every major version. It is mentioned here to denote the entire priesthood, the Levites, the entire priesthood that performed various functions. And they would be considered experts in the text of Scripture. That's why they are apparently were sent along. The purpose of the mission is not spelled out, but I can't think it was a noble one. I, I don't think this was a noble mission. They probably were trying to trap John like they would later try and trap Jesus. See, John, he was not an ordinary man, and his ministry had interrupted the status quo. It was a, his, his ministry challenged the whole hierarchical religious system right. of mm -hmm. producing leaders, just one one next generation, just like that generation. Amen. Yeah. Everybody agrees with everybody. Everybody stands, gets in line, and keeps their place in line, and yeah. so forth. Yeah, mm -hmm. he interrupted the whole thing. Yeah. Like an earthquake, like a spiritual <laughs> earthquake that he came. There have been periods of history like this. God will just, like, shake yeah. things up. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> Here he did one man, he just shook things up. And the people that were shook up the most were the people with the stereotype religion. Well, those are the people that get shook up first. Yeah. The people with stereotype, fixed in stone, methodologies, techniques, they're shook up when life yeah. Yeah, right. yeah, is introduced. Yeah. Now, you can imagine uh, if everybody from the people all of a sudden flock to this house from Springfield almost to Tulsa. Hmm? Mm -hmm. And he just flocked. He'd get the attention of every newscaster in town. Oh, yeah. This was a remarkable phenomenon. These people journeyed. You see, you had Ju Judea, Samaria, yes. and Galilee. They come from all yeah. from all these regions. They come to hear John. From Fayetteville to Tulsa to Nevada to Springfield, yeah. with Joplin being in the center. Yeah. That's how large this area was. It's remarkable, see. Mm -hmm. Nothing like this had ever occurred. It had not in a long time, at any rate, yeah. had anything like this occurred. They'd carved out these these leaders had carved out a place for themselves to maintain an elite status, and here comes this man in the wilderness. Interrupting the whole thing. So they sent this entourage of priests and Levites to ask him, quote, Who art thou? Yeah. Right now, they're asking from a biblical point of view, so to speak. See, they got the Bible probably in hand. They probably have the scriptures in hand. Where are you? Where's the talk about you in here? See, they, that's really what they're asking. They're not asking. We, 
They're not asking for John's testimony where he came from and all that. That's not what they're asking. See, the Lord taught them that they should be cautious about hearing someone that they would did they really come from God? Here's how the law put it. And if thou shalt say in thine heart, How shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? As he said, if a prophet tells you something not true, you got to put him to death. You can't listen. How are we going to know who's not talking? What God said. When the prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, he tells them how. If thou know not, if I follow not, nor come to pass, that the thing that which the Lord hath not spoken, if, let me read, when the prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, now let me tell you while I'm reading this, this has some serious, serious implications. If the thing which he has spoken follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. But the prophet has spoken it presumptuously, follow, thou shalt not be afraid of him. <laughs> well, you got to transpose that over in today's society. If we say the Lord will do something, and the person believes this word and obeys it, and the Lord doesn't do it, the prophet lied. Hmm? So if churches say, say, say a church, see, once you believe, you'll never fall away. Hmm. If that doesn't happen, yeah. the person that said it lied. Amen. Amen. God didn't send that person. Mm -hmm. See, there's some serious implications. Mm -hmm. But the, they had proof if they'd have seen it. There are people repenting and being baptized all around there. That was the proof. That was the proof that John was from God because what he said was actually taking place. Now, mind you, they're, uh, they're not asking for the identity of his parents or who he was a person unless they would seek his genealogy to see whether he was, whether he was qualified to be a leader. They knew he was extraordinary, but they didn't know why. Mm -hmm. They knew he was unusually effective, but they couldn't see the reason why. Yeah. Perhaps they thought with a little more information we can sort this thing out and figure it all out. Find a way to justify ourselves. Whatever we find out, we've got to keep our place. I mean, that, mm -hmm. We all understand that, that, don't we, brother? And they'd say to one another, we've got to make, we got to make sure we keep our place. So. Yeah. But that's why we got to find this out. Maintain our own offices. Now, it's estimated that the journey to John from Jerusalem was about 26 miles. So they were serious about this. They didn't, you know, charter a taxi or something like that to get there. And that also tells us something else, that what John is doing had got back that same 26 miles into Jerusalem. Yeah. So people went out to hear John, they're talking about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When they come back, and it, mu it must have been highly disruptive. Mm -hmm. Have all this life all of a sudden break it out in the synagogues. And Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. He was baptizing Jewish people, <laughs> That's not right. the Gentiles. That's yeah. right. And, they, and they were, he was baptizing them unto repentance. So, <laughs> they, they <wouldn't> know. <laughs> so they come back. I mean, this had to change the environment a lot of places. Oh, yeah. You know what happens when you're alive in Christ? Well, it was the same kind of thing here that happened. Now, since John had been preaching, the kingdom of God had been preached. That had never been preached before. Nobody preached the kingdom of God. But he is telling the kingdom of God's near, kingdom of God's near. And Jesus said, every man is pressing into it. Boy, they heard about this kingdom. Oh, they want, they want it into it. Later, the Jews told the Jesus told these Jews, "John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and ye believed him not." Well, there you are. See, That's, he's still going to raise the question about Elijah in here. This will help you with that. You, you didn't believe him. He believed him not, but the publicans and harlots believed him, and ye, when ye had seen it, repented not afterward that ye might believe him. 
That, that's how these these men, that's how they received. Even though there was abundant evidence that what he said was true, they still didn't receive him. Jesus said, for the days of John the Baptist until the present time, this is from the Amplified Bible, the kingdom of God has endured violent assault, and men, violent men seize it by force as a precious prize. A share in the heavenly kingdom is sought with most ardent zeal and intense exertion. <laughs> well, that hadn't happened, been happening in that area. So people, they probably dropped a lot of activities, changed what they talked about, changed the way they lived. They wanted what John is yeah, amen, amen. preaching about. Who? Who are you? In that instant, smart people ask, who are you? You know, people that thought they were elite. Mm -hmm. Someone needs to ask them that. Yes, right. Who are you? <laughs> he confessed and denied not. See, he must have known the climate his ministry had created. He knew. He knew he was sent from God. See, he knew who he was sent from God. And the people, Luke 3.15 says, were in expectation and all men mused in their hearts of John whether he was the Christ or not. Yeah. See, that, so that was all, it's the kind of environment we got here. So he's going to address multiple things. The people thought he was Christ, he's going to clear up he wasn't. It's like we're waiting for Christ to come. Yes, they were right. waiting for Christ to come yes, at that right. time, too. <laughs> Great expectation. Yeah. Yeah, amen. Now, I think uh, I've lived during a couple of seasons like this when there was a general expectation that something was going to going to happen. I've, I've, I've seen some of that, not to, the, not to the degree I'd like to see, but I've seen some of that when there was a general expectation something's about to, something's about to happen here. Not not like a bomb or something like that, but right. something from God. There's a yeah. there's sort of an unsettling of carnality and this sort of thing, and some people can see it. Yes, amen. Yeah, but you can see that John's um, the mission that he's been sent on. He's completing it very well. That's right. He's, he, the things that he say, has said is created this expectation. The expectation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. I was also considering the spirit of expectation before when you mentioned it earlier, remembering that when uh, the Lord was getting ready to deliver his people out of Egypt, yes. mm -hmm. he, he gave the same sort of That's expectation right. in people. And I remember last mm -hmm. Friday you were speaking and you said there are some occurrences that happen that can't be explained by human wisdom. Yeah. And this is one of those things. It's yeah. like the Lord stirs the hearts of his yeah. people mm -hmm. in this expectation. Maybe he renews uh, a particular promise and the focus of the brethren That's that good. they look for these That's things. Good. Or maybe he, um, well, if all of these things can, he can do to bring the spirit of expectation mm -hmm. before he's beginning to do a work. See, this, yeah. this is a great consolation to know this. If you, if you will step back far enough that you can look at this assembly without personal, you know, things, step back far enough, you'll see that from time to time there's kind of a stirring. Some, some, we're being prepared for something. People be talking about the same kind of thing. They be concerned about kind of the same kind of things. When they pray, they have a little higher motivation. That's expectation. That's what that is, as Sister Barbara said. That's the prelude to, to God working. And that some people had recognized. He, they had recognized the, the signs. I don't know what they all were, but they had. He, the scriptures had taught them to look for a, a prophet, mm -hmm. look for a deliverer, a protector, a savior, one who'd gather them together. He, the, their scriptures had taught them that God was going to do, do this. And there was something about the time they began to like want this. You look forward to this. Circumstances had been jarred around so much so that all of a sudden, hey, wait, 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 wait. Hadn't God said something about the deliverer? Yeah, amen. About someone who'd lift us up and feed us and carry us? See there, you can see it, that kind of environment is kind of happening in our time. God's shaking. He's shaking things. So you can't trust a nest. 
Can't trust in that. Shakes it, see. Creating an expectation. Centuries had passed and still, we're talking about long, many hundreds of years past, and still this flame of hope existed. It's just, it's flaming up now. It's been, it's been like a smoldering wick. All of a sudden a flame. Yes, Sister Brett. Note that there's two things that happen in a time of shaking. For some people, it breaks things down and things come crashing yeah. down. But in other times, in other people, <laughs> we can say it, there's things that are dislodged, maybe from the memory, that are brought up to Draw the surface. Up. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> now, I, a carnal man to try and exploit this kind of situation, but not, not John. He confessed and denied not. Some of the other versions said he did not fail to confess. He just come right out and told him, he said, um, I'm not the Christ. Yeah. Now keep in mind, this is, a, this is a man who's popular with the people. This would be an ideal time to take personal advantage of this circumstance because there went out to him all the land of Judea, and they had Jerusalem all baptized in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But this man, John the Baptist, does not exploit that to personal advantage. He's going to tell them later, one greater than me is coming. I am not the Christ. Some other versions use Messiah. Now the... Uh, <coughs> Isaiah spoke of one who was anointed to preach glad tidings. Now the coming of Christ is said to be a branch, a foundation stone, God's servant, God's elect, the Lord our righteousness, the son of righteousness, a branch, a righteous branch, the branch of righteousness, the servant, my servant, the branch, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace, a king, the reign in righteousness, but in our English Bibles, from Genesis to Malachi, neither Christ nor Messiah is mentioned a single time. And even in the uh, original language, the anointed, when it's mentioned, it was like to Satan, the anointed cherub. Nebuchadnezzar was called the anointed. These two terms were not found in Scripture. But the people were looking for the Christ. Yeah. They read the Scriptures and they concluded there's one person they're talking about, yeah. the Christ, mm -hmm. the Messiah. Yeah. <laughs> Most of the references about Christ referred to what he'd do mm -hmm. rather than what he was called. Say he bruised the serpent's head, feed the flock, and so forth. I list those things. But he doesn't use these terms. <laughs> this is the part that was kind of kind of new to me. They knew scripture, but the terms Christ and Messiah are more a conclusion. Those are conclusionary, that, those are conclusionary terms. They read the scriptures and they said, This is these are talking about a single person. This is pointing to a single person. All these prophecies about who Christ is going to be. See, someone, someone could read all those and think, well, that's a congregation of just one person, yeah. all of it. Yes. And there is, there is similar language in the Psalms, like Psalm 2. The rulers take counsel against the Lord and against his anointed. His anointed. Mm -hmm. And David was called the Lord's anointed. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I think a lot of people who study the Bible have noticed that Jesus did not go around saying, Hey, I'm the Christ. Yeah. He did not do that. No. Mm -hmm. yeah. The reason was is because all of this, all of their ideas about the Christ did not conform to what God had sent him yeah. to do. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I'm familiar with that text, but you mm -hmm. see, it was unusual. You'd think this would be on every page. No, it was. It was on every page, but not in this, not in this language. The, the Jewish mindset, they knew how to read the scriptures and pick up on what the scriptures were saying. All right, now this is largely lost in our day. This is not how 
This is not how the average person reads the Bible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To see what it's saying. Yeah. What it's, what's it telling you about? Jesus, he, now he specified. He said, there they would testify of me. So mm -hmm. he told you. But this, these terms, that's what these terms are telling the people. This is talk. We see that there's somebody, there's a single person that's taught, being talked about in Scripture that's going to bring all this, all this of God's promise is going to be brought by a person. It's not going to be happen by some kind of a key event. It's going to, going to come to a person. John says, that person's not me. I'm not the Christ. Most of the references I've mentioned say accent what he was going to do. Bruise the serpent's head and feed the flock and bring judgment to the Gentiles. Judah shall be saved. So forth. that's what he'd do. The things that God has promised could not be accomplished by anyone other than someone special yeah. that God would send into the world. Nobody could read these various prophecies about a coming Savior and set out to fulfill them. Yeah. Uh -huh. Amen. They were just too lofty. Everybody knows it. No thinking person will attempt to answer all of those. Say, I'm, I'm what he was talking about. Uh -huh. Take a lot of boldness if a dead person did do that. This also tells you that the people fundamentally knew the scriptures. This is the Bible-oriented people. They knew the scriptures. So, so someone said, Christ, everybody knew what they're talking about, even though the term may not have been there. They knew what they were talking about, though they have the Christ, the one. The one. There's an expectation. Maybe John's the one. So sent prior deliverers to help them to yeah. think this way, that he would send like Moses, one man, yeah. down to Egypt. That was the means of delivering his people. The times of the judges particularly accentuated this kind of thing where a judge, one person, would rise up and become yeah. the means by which yeah. his people would be delivered. And so God's dealings with them had helped to assist them with this kind of conclusion right. as well, Amen. to look for a man mm -hmm. to do it all. It's a the people thought John may yeah. John may be the man. Yeah. Can they imagine what kind of excitement that stirred among yeah. some of the people? The point I'm, I'm trying to make is that, as I say, that Messiah, Christ, Anointed One, uh -huh. are generally summary summary conclusions. Mm -hmm. His anointed, as mentioned in Psalm two, but it's not it's not clear it's not clear enough. In that day, it's it was still very big. It took Hebrews to point out to you that I was talking about Christ. See, so it, it, this was a vague type thing. It, it, God preparing the people wasn't by using certain terms. How he prepared you by telling what he'd do. What would happen when this Christ came? Now John appears and he's so radically different than anybody else. They think it possibly might be him. Now as I hinted at, we can learn something here. More must be declared about what Christ does, did, and does Amen. than what we should do. We can't leave off what you should do. We can't leave that off. But more, the burden has to be on. Otherwise, you won't have expectation. See? The expectations created by declaring what Christ has done and is doing. That's what creates the expectation, just like it did to these people. They create, what God's going to do is what created, with this Messiah, is what created the expectation. I think... An, a lot of people haven't heard enough about Christ to be expectant. Yeah, amen. Amen. Right. When they, quote, join the church or whatever they call it, they don't really expect much to happen. Mm -hmm. It's just that they're part of the group now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, there's a reason why God has done it this way. This, is, this will assist us in determining where Christ is and where he isn't. 
if God says this is what this man's going to do, where that's being done, that man is. Where it's not being done, that man isn't. It's just really it's that simple. And you've got a you've got a test like the Jews would do test prophets do the running and they listen. What you say happens isn't happening. That's assuming you believe the that's assuming you believe the message now. That's where other Jesuses come in. People would think John was the Christ because he was he was bringing people closer to God. That's right. They were yeah. repenting. That's right. And confessing their sins yeah. publicly. <laughs> yeah. Publicly. Yeah. yeah. Most of these large meetings they were taken by the back room. This was Jason. Yeah, going back to that that point about the term the Christ, the, I think it's it's really important to see that Jesus he was going to define for everyone That's good. what the Christ was. He was, not, he was not going to allow the people to tell him That's what good. kind of king. Christ means a king. Yeah. What kind of king. Remember later in John 6, they were going to make him king by force. Uh -huh. And he got out of there. He yeah. wasn't going to have any of that. Mm -hmm. Remember Pilate said, so you're a king? So he, but he said, my kingdom is not of this world. It's a different I, I'm going to define it. Remember in the road to Emmaus, yeah. what he said to those two disciples, he said, Foolish one, slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter his glory? Now that's the thing that got him. Mm -hmm. The Jews could not conceive that's right. of a Christ yeah. who would die. Uh -huh. That's right. Yes. Or who wouldn't stay on earth. Remember he said, i got to go back to heaven. Yeah. 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 They said, one time in John, they said, Isn't the Christ going to stay here forever? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And then it says, beginning with this and, all, and with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the scripture. That's right. So yeah. it's not it's not a matter of well, we have the Bible's like we're just going to go to the Bible now and figure this out. No, it's no. not that simple. No. Jesus interprets the Bible. Yeah. Mm. yeah these, I want to underscore this: the Jews were Bible students. They weren't like Americans, and they could. And these disciples were exceptional. Scriptural students, yeah. uh -huh. and they Jesus had to tell them That's right. yeah. Amen. what it was. So if you if you know that, that and Jesus is the one that showed you. you I'm sorry, one other quick point. On, you mentioned the application to the church. I think a good application for the church is the church ought to be willing to say we are not the Christ. Uh -huh. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. yes, and that's right. I, I hear a that's lot of good. But see the church is today the church is taking yeah. credit for stuff. That's right. Uh -huh. That ought to be given to Jesus. I, I've actually heard people say I've heard church leaders say, and I, I get real uncomfortable when I hear this kind of language from church leaders. The church is the greatest hope for the world. Yeah. Have you ever heard somebody oh, say yeah. that? I've heard, I've heard people say that. Mm -hmm. That, I think that's really dangerous kind of yes, talk. It is. And we, yeah. See, yes, John the Baptist said, "I'm not the Christ." Yeah. Now I'm a messenger from the Christ. Yeah, but I'm not the Christ. But I'm not him. Mm -hmm. We ought to say the same thing. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Amen. Well, they, they appeared to accept that. They asked him, "What then? Yeah. Art thou Elias or Elijah?" So as I say, it appears as though they received his testimony. He wasn't the Christ. They probably were kind of relieved. But the people are not willing to let the matter rest there. You've got to be somebody else in the, in the Scripture. Are you, uh, are you Elijah? Remember, this is just one verse in the Bible that refers to this. One verse. They're referring to the prophecy of Malachi. Behold, I will send you, uh, send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. That's the only reference to Elijah from Isaiah through Malachi. Interesting, isn't it? Elijah's mother and father are not out, like we don't know of his mother and father. All we know about him, he was Elijah the Tishbite from Gilead. That's, mm -hmm. 
It's a sum total what you know about Elijah's. A lot of, a lot of the prophets read this the father. That's right. That's right. Well, they had to tell from the sun up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, John the Baptist, the angel told John the Baptist, uh, Zacharias, his son John the Baptist, would come in the spirit and power of Elijah. Not in the body of Elijah, the spirit and power of Elijah. Jesus uh, said he didn't accomplish, though, what this Elijah of Malachi will do. He said, I say unto you, Elias has come already, and they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed or wished. But that's not what Malachi, that's not what Malachi said. So he was he was highlighted. He came. He, he was a he was the same kind of prophet uh -huh. that this whoever this Elijah is. He was the same kind of prophet as that. But he he wasn't the Elijah of Malachi. Uh -huh. There's no need for anybody to speculate about whether he was or not. John said, "I'm not," yeah, that's right. and he was full of the Holy Spirit from his mother's womb. So his answer is good enough for me. Yeah, right. I am not. Yeah. Art thou then that prophet? See, they got another one. Yeah. There's, there's not that many. Now, there's not that many personalities they can call out. <laughs> Art thou the prophet? That's the prophet of whom Moses spake. Lord thy God shall raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren like unto me. Unto him ye shall hearken. I will raise up a prophet from among the brethren, the brethren like unto me, and will put word my words in his mouth, and he shall speak. Unto them all that I have commanded him. So I looked on the surface of it. Maybe, yeah. maybe this is John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. He he's saying different kind of words. Mm -hmm. Are you the prophet? I don't question that they probably had in their arsenal some rebuttals if he did say he was one of those. I can't I can't imagine that these men were honest in, in their and they're asking. And Jesus, as I read to you previously, said the people didn't believe him. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. He didn't come out and told you, you didn't believe him. Yes. Well, that's not what Malachi said. He said he would effectively turn the hearts of the children uh -huh. to the fathers, that's the Abrahamic fathers. Are you that prophet? And he said he wasn't. Some thought that in Jesus, that in Jesus, Elijah had appeared. Some people thought Jesus was Elijah. Luke 9, 8, they thought that Jesus, Elijah had appeared and of others that one of the old prophets had risen again. See, the, the Jews, they didn't have trouble thinking of the miraculous. You, you pick up on this? They didn't have trouble thinking of the miraculous. You talk to someone in church and say, what do you think of one of the old prophets wrote? Come on, you know, they wouldn't they wouldn't accept that at all. Just, the Lord to take care of them or whatever, you know, I mean, they won't believe anything much mm -hmm. about the Lord. So. Yeah, they didn't ask him, are you Zeus or something? Yeah. 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 Aaron thought he was John the Baptist. Yeah. Come back. So, and when Jesus said, who do men say that I am? Uh -huh. His disciples answered, John the Baptist. Uh -huh. John the Baptist is dead at this yeah. time. John the Baptist. But, so, but some, Elijah, uh -huh. but others say that one of the old prophets, one of the old prophets has risen again. <laughs> and people didn't have any. Uh -huh. See, they, brethren, they thought their thinking was different than what has been produced in our age. In our age, people have been taught to think differently. They, they don't think this way. If it's hard for you to believe that yeah, maybe Elijah could come back, I mean, if it's hard for you to think that, well, think it over again. This shouldn't be hard for us to think. We're not saying he is, we just don't know. He is of interest that he didn't die. You know? This text, the prophet in reference, however, is when Moses said, he said, uh, he answered, no. No further explanation required. Actually, whether you are John the Baptist or one of his contemporary disciples, 
when you know and acquiesce to the fact that you're serving Jesus and are maintaining fellowship with him, it has a significant impact on your life. Yeah, that's right. uh -huh. It does. It has an impact on your life. He says, I have not. So he didn't act like he was. When they heard the children, you know, the Jews and the priests and Levites, the priests and Levites were sent. Mm -hmm. The priests are generally painted as Jesus' enemies. The chief priests, Jesus said, were the ones who would betray and condemn him. Mm -hmm. When they heard the children praising Jesus, remember the chief priests were yeah. sore displeased yeah. when they heard that. Uh -huh. They questioned the authority of Jesus in Matthew 21, 23. They were among those that consulted how to take Jesus and kill him, Matthew 26, 3. So it's, it's not possible for men like this to have a good question or good fruit. Now, brethren, today, God's people must be discerning people. We've had enough of this period of simplicity. It's lasted for several centuries now. We have had enough, a long enough, people loving simplicity and ignorance reigning in the church and people not understanding the scriptures. We've had, we've had enough of that. It's time for people to be discerning to where they don't have to ask, are you from God? They don't have to ask it. They know it. Or, are you, or they know if he's not. Remember, there are people who appear to be interested in you that really want to use you. Now, you can't always go to somebody else to help you on this. It's good if you can, but you've got to be able to discern whether people are trying to use you or whether they're trying to minister to you. And sometimes it's not that easy to, to tell because Satan's subtle. We shouldn't expect all delusion to be very apparent. Yeah, yeah. Satan's subtle. So I, uh, I applaud John. I just, I, I appreciate the way he handled this. Yes, amen. Amen. Short to the point, no long dialogue. No, I'm not there. I'm not the Christ. Uh -huh. no. You're Elijah. I'm not. You're the prophet. No. Always try and have short conversations with the ungodly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Amen. Not long ones. Yes. Amen. That's the way John was. Mm -hmm. Of course, this was God. God protected John, too. That's right. I'm going to close there. Any of you have something you'd like to add tonight? Yes, Brother Jason. Yeah. The, Another way to look at that is this contrast between John and these these men that went out to John, these these Jews, these Jewish leaders. You know, they they claimed to represent God, mm -hmm. <laughs> and they read the Bible and everything, but they had their they they had their own agenda. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. they were in it for a different reason. They, right. they had their own agenda. John had absolutely no personal agenda. That's his true. his only goal. I like it, what it says in the, what we call the synoptics, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Mm -hmm. When they asked him, he, all he did was quote Isaiah. He said, I'm a voice. I'm a voice. Yeah. Yeah. Who are you? I'm a voice. I'm a voice. Mm -hmm. yeah, he that's, says that John. He's completely yeah. devoted to God. Yeah. See, that's, that's a, now, that's a person that yeah. you can trust. Yes, a person amen. you can trust is a person that doesn't have any personal like agenda. Yeah, that's they're, right. They're, all they're saying, all they want, remember later he said, I must decrease, yeah. he must increase. Yeah. He wasn't jealous at all. Most people, you know, we got really jealous. Yeah. Oh, I'm not the center of attention anymore. <laughs> what do I got? I got to do some publicity stunt or something. John just stepped aside. That's yeah. right. Amen. Write a novel book or something and draw attention to yourself. Yeah. Now, he would have a whole lot more to say to the, co uh, to the contrite oh. humble heart. <laughs> he knew who these men were. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so he didn't he didn't have a whole lot to say mm -hmm. say to him. He was prepared to preach and people were prepared to hear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that emphasis you brought out on the Messiah and Savior being words of conclusion. And all things uh, terminate in Christ. 
The crea creation was made by him and for him. And even, even in the way we count time, years, everything counted up to Christ when he was born, or it counted down. Yeah. So that yeah. when, when he was born, and then it count, it's counting up now to the time he's coming again. So Christ, Christ is pivotal in everything. Yes. And I appreciated that emphasis on the actual meaning of those words being having to do with the conclusion. Amen. That's what Jesus meant when he said they, they was testified of me. Mm -hmm. But it, the testimony is if you have a veil over your heart, you can't see it. But if you don't, it's everywhere. Some that say, wait a minute, John was sent with a specific purpose to get the people ready for Christ. But wait a minute, they rejected him and crucified him. Yeah, so how did he get him? Is he, he got the ones ready that were supposed right. to be made ready. Yes. Look at these disciples. Yes, right. they, See, were, they were made ready. Yes, here is John, right. John hears him say, this is the Lamb of God, and he follows him. Why? Because he was made ready. That's yeah. right. That's why. See, John, he was... Remember, he had some disciples in Asia. Uh -huh. And he was not a traveling itinerant evangelist. He had, a, he had people, disciples in Asia. So he was, yeah. he had a remarkable influence, but it paled next to Christ. Uh, amen. Now, when those disciples turned to follow the truth, they turned to it immediately. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Just like those two disciples right. turned and followed Christ. And mm -hmm. that, so far as we know, was the termination of John's baptism and all that. Uh -huh. was, that was it. That was the end of it. But that's how, what, what kind of influence this man was. Uh -huh. But he, uh, he was not, as Brother Jason pointed out, he did not have his own private agenda. Uh -huh. yeah. Alright, we'll have a word of prayer. Our right, Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for John the Baptist and for the candor of his testimony. But we thank Thee most of all for the Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the Scriptures testify. Help us to see Him in every page and every line. Through Jesus we pray. Amen.